My name is Savannah and today we're going to be talking about an interesting principle that is both a chemistry and a physics topic. This is the Pauli exclusion principle. This principle has to do with the physical world and the small components of matter known as electrons. Um, throughout this presentation, I'll often be representing electrons with the symbol E with a negative sign um, for simplicity. So in this explanation of electrons and the Pauli exclusion principle, um, to explain it, we're going to compare electrons to clones. Two clones, two people that are clones of each other, so even more than identical twin twins, they are clones named Jack 1 and Jack 2. These clones are exactly the same in every aspect. Not only do they look the same and have the same colored hair, they're the same height, they have the same likes and dislikes, and they even have the same voice. In every sense, they are identical and impossible to differentiate between. So in this presentation, we're going to be comparing electrons to Jack 1 and Jack 2. Because just like these clones, electrons have the exact same mass and the exact same charge. One electron is completely indistinguishable from the other, just like Jack 1 and Jack 2. So then how can we tell who is who? That was a horrible question mark. But, how can we tell who is who? How do we know who is Jack 1 and who is Jack 2? Or, which electron is which? And how can we talk about electrons as being different from each other when in mass and charge and other quant um, quantitative principles, they're the exact same? This is where the Pauli exclusion principle comes into play we are going to discuss how Jack 1 and Jack 2 are indistinguishable from each other, just like electrons, except for in one aspect. Their address, if we were to mail them a letter, is different. So, Jack 1 and Jack 2 both live in the beautiful country, about in this region of Peru. They both live in Peru, specifically, they live in the city of Lima. Both Jack 1 and Jack 2 reside in the same apartment building, and the only difference is that Jack 1 lives in room 201. Whereas Jack 2 lives in room 202. So if we were to mail, an a, or mail a letter to Jack 1, we would mail it to Peru. We'd mail it specifically to the city of Lima, to the specific apartment building, and to Jack 1's room of room 201. Same goes for Jack 2, except for we would choose room 202. So, in this example, um, we are comparing Jack 1 and Jack 2 to electrons. Each of the aspects of Jack 1 and Jack 2's addresses apply to what we call, um, within the Pauli exclusion principle, quantum numbers. I'll write that here. Quantum numbers. So, for example, the country, again, they were in Peru, the country aspect of the Jack 1 and Jack 2's addresses is being compared in this example to the principal quantum number, which is known as N. 
This principal quantum number describes the energy level of the specific electron. I'm actually going to, for simplicity, I'm just going to write electron like that. So the country represents the principal quantum number and the energy level of the electron. If we look at the Bohr model of the atom, if you remember back to this Bohr model where we have the electrons orbitals, that was a bad drawing, but the electrons orbitals represented as circular orbitals around the nucleus. We have electrons in each shell. So we could have this ring here in the middle be the first shell, then we have the second and the third. So n can equal 1, for example, to tell us that the electron is this electron in there on the first shell, the first energy level um, of the atom. The next principle is in relationship to the city. So we said that both Jack 1 and Jack 2 lived in Lima. Um, in this case, the city is referring to, and here I'm going to move this up here. The city is referring to the angular momentum quantum, I'm just going to do Q number, which is L. This angular momentum quantum number describes the shape of the orbital where the electron is found. Where the electron is found. Sorry for the awkward pauses as I draw. So the angular momentum quantum number L tells us what shape the orbital is in, or the electron, what shape the orbital is where the electron is found. So, for example, we can have L equals 0, 1, 2, or L equals 3. If you remember back to um, general chemistry, or maybe another physics class you've taken, um, there are shells that are shaped and given letter representations of S, P, D, and F. So the angular momentum quantum number L tells us what shape the electron's orbital is. Next we have the building. So the building in this analogy represents um, the magnetic quantum number. Magnetic quantum number M sub L. M sub L is a ma um, magnetic quantum number. It tells us which orbital within the overall S, P, D, or F orbital the electron is found. So which orbital within the S, P, D, or F, remember that is this angular momentum quantum number, the S, P, D, and F is referring to that um, like the city of our electron, which orbital within S, P, D, or F the electron is found. So, for example, within a P orbital, there are three, if, you've, if you remember back to, let's see if I can draw them real fast. Um, this one is pointing into the page, this one right here. This one's pointing up and down, and this one horizontally. Um, those are the three possible types of p orbitals. Um, they are sometimes called x, y, and z. Um, but that's beside the point. We, this is what we're talking about here. Which of these orbitals the electron is found if, for example, its angular momentum quantum number, again, this one, this one over here, was in this case... P, we would want to specify which orbital it was in. If you were to go back to our analogy, this would be the equivalent of saying which apartment building among all of the apartment buildings in the city of Lima our person is found. Uh, the next and last 
part of this analogy is the room in which uh, Jack 1 and Jack 2 lived. This is referring to the spin quantum number, which is represented by m sub s. m sub s is one of the easier of the four quantum numbers. It describes the angular momentum, angular momentum of the electron, and it is either plus one half or minus one half. So, taking these four different address um, points into account, we can see that if you give an electron a principal quantum number, an angular momentum quantum number, a magnetic quantum number, and a spin quantum number, then we have its exact address within an atom. So this way we can tell electrons apart even if they're on the same atom. We can tell what energy level, first of all, what shape of the orbital they're in, which orbital within that overall shape the electron is found, and then according to their spin quantum number, specify exactly which electron we're talking about. The Pauli exclusion principle overall, let me write it one more time, Pauli exclusion principle, it's hard to write and talk at the same time, but the Pauli exclusion principle overall says that every electron has a unique set of quantum numbers. In other words, a unique address. So that is overall the Pauli exclusion principle, which helps us identify electrons uh, from each other, even though on a very basic level they are identical. Um, we just have to differentiate where they're found, and that's where this principle comes into play.